how and why did you hear it? I don't know. Like I, I was just chilling. Was it a ringtone? No, it literally just popped. You ever have those things that just pop into your head and it's like, oh. oh. Okay, but so you did hear it for real though. I mean, of course I've heard it. Okay, 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 okay. I didn't know if you just said, uh, all right, all right. I'm just, just forgive me. I'm trying. That's really cool. Right. I mean, I, I love that music. Oh, it doesn't get any better than Zelda. Ooh, and then you get the... Do it again? Yeah, that'll always be so good. Now, what I, what I love is uh, Link in Wind Waker. He goes, yep, yep. Yeah, yep, yep. Yep, when he's, yep, which yep. which I mentioned in one of my Ocarina of Time videos, because Little Link was climbing the stairs in that Dundago's cavern, and I <laughs> mentioned, yep, yep, yep. and I mentioned in that video, I'm like, I love Wind Waker because yep, yep, as he climbs. Anyway, I just love those little sound effects. Now he's all angry every time he does anything. <laughs> I know, and it makes me want to. So it makes me want to go play Tears, but. I, all those Tears of the Kingdom videos I made, I made because I was borrowing my son's copy, and because I felt yeah. bad, I kept it for like six months. I gave it back to him, so I don't have Tears right now. Mm -hmm. And if I and if I wasn't saving up for the computer, I'd go buy Tears right now. It, but, it's an incredible game, man. I like, know. I I played it, and it took so like many hours out of me. So yeah, way back years ago, whenever the Switch originally came out, yes. I had got my Switch and ended up using that to play. I got the bundle that came with uh, Breath of the Wild. Sweet. Okay, cool. And so I played Breath of the Wild. Yeah, there she is. Oh, that's cool. This is the OLED, nice. OLED Zelda model. I'm not trying to interrupt you. But yeah, and it has the cradle with the uh, Triforce on it and everything. Yep. That's sick. So but I, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I... I had was playing Breath of the Wild and I played it for hours. And I hours know. Staying up till like six a.m. playing that game every single day. Like, and when the DLCs came out, I bought what was it called? Like Master. Yes. Something. The Master Quest and all yeah, the extra stuff. And, and then you go into Tears of the Kingdom, and it's like it's it feels so like refreshing because there's just a lot of innovation in these games that are coming up like well dude like the whole like putting things together and building vehicles like that's incredible the zone i and, tech yeah the yes. zone i tech in general it's incredible it took open world to a new level not only is yeah. it open world but it's a world in which you can create so now create, yeah. creation those doors are flung wide open make anything you want you know, strap a rocket to a shield and you're blasting up a wall. I mean, yeah, and building your own hover bike and you can build it anytime you want. It's ridiculous. And you can create your own weapons. You can combine yes. them. Yeah, oh, I That's know. Fusing, fusing weapons. And if you, if you go way back, I'm thinking like Majora's Mask or maybe even before then, when it was just a 2D game. Yeah. It's so different now. Yes. It's, the game 3D. It's open world. It's yes. got ver verticality. Yes. Not even just up, but down. I know. I know. And left, right, you can go literally every direction. Everything yes. in the world is full of things to look at and do, and it's just incredible. It's ridiculous. Here's my take on what you just said. With Mario, I prefer him in a 2D slash somewhat quarter 3D, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, but I like Mario in the 2D platforming. I don't care for Mario in open world. It's just really? me. Yes. But, but when Zelda went open world, when Ocarina of Time came out, my mind's blown. You know, like I said, that game's still my favorite. It's why I've made all these videos on my channel. But yeah, that's kind of my thing. I like Mario to be more 2D. I just want to jump and go crazy like that. But have but the whole open, like I didn't care for Mario sixty four as much. I know I'm weird that way. So I like Zelda. So I kind of have, oh, go ahead. No, I like Zelda to be full three D open world, but I like Mario. I like the two D platforming Mario's. That's just kind of my thing. So go ahead. I have an opposite dilemma because I really, I really like um, my Zelda in three D. Of course, we're the same yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, what my favorite Zelda game is Twilight Princess. Hot take. Oh, yeah. Uh, yes. Hot take. But incredible yes, game. It, it, it is. It's just, the style of it, the mood of it, the atmosphere, 
It's, it's dark. The, that the atmosphere is incredible. Incredible. It, it's it's. It fits so well with like the the Midna theme and like the whole turning into a wolf and yeah, it, it's just so good and Ganon's yeah, I, sick in that game like it's all great and yeah totally. When it comes to Mario, I don't prefer them in two D. Uh-huh. I when I got Odyssey, it was like incredible to me and I you know obviously you happen to be the minority because have you seen how Odyssey sold? I mean, the numbers were incredible. It, yes, it was and, the top seller, just like Breath of the Wild when it came out. And on my channel, my son and I, he played Odyssey. We have three videos, in fact. I know a lot about Odyssey, where we made the, these hour-plus videos of work going through the levels of Odyssey. It's a walkthrough. And so my son played it. So yeah, my son's beaten it multiple times. Me, I'm just there to watch. I do sure. appreciate it. Going in that sort of real city... And meeting the mayor and all that kind of stuff. I mean, really cool. New Donk City uh, and all those different levels. Yeah, I can. I appreciate it completely. But I don't know. I just I, I prefer Mario in a kind of a more two D aspect. That, but I, I I assume I'm a minority on that. So. But I mean, that's understandable. Like you know, you have to appreciate. At the end of the day, the amount of hours, time, effort, and cre- creativity that goes into making something like an open mm. world Mario game, mm. it's. It really is a complicated process that you have yeah. to be great for because they put a lot of effort into that. Oh, yo, yo, um, I, no, I completely agree. But I, you I, can't, I just don't think that the 2D will ever be able to compare. It's just, it's not on yeah. the same level. But at the end of the day, the 2D, 2D games of Mario are a classic. You can never just replace them. No. No. They're, they're classics. If they, you ever hop on a in Nintendo 64, Play some Mario. You're yeah. going to have fun. I, I completely agree. And I played a lot of, of Mario 64. And uh, in the subsequent uh, stuff after that. Uh, yeah, I've, I've played them. Yeah, definitely. Because, I mean, it being... And here's the thing. Here's the caveat to what I just said. Again, I prefer a Mario, but in 2D. However, when I got Mario 64, just like Ocarina of Time... Having Mario in this whole open world, I can move the camera around and look and look at the castle and go swim underwater. No, it blew my mind. It did. Yeah. Because I felt like I'm actually somewhere now. I'm in a place now and I get to explore. I I completely appreciate that. Um, However, I do like my Mario a little bit more on rails, if you will. And, you know, in that 2D form. I just, I like the rails, if you will. Yeah. It's probably a better word for it, but. You know, I'm so glad- are you say- Go ahead. Are you saying you like kind of a um thinking of the word myself? Yeah. Instead of open world, you would like it to be very straightforward, like almost like do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. With Mario, yes. Then- because I because I appreciate the skills that it requires to do the jumping and the running and all the you know, like that's a whole skill set. All right. Knowing it when is- and how it's a jump. very different game. It is, and and therefore I like that set of skills. With Mario, I'm not as interested in exploring. Now Zelda, completely different. That's a complete oh, yeah. fantasy world, and that that's I'll go for it every time. And yeah. uh, ever since Ocarina, yes, I'm on board 100. Um, percent You know, I'm glad you brought it up. What I'm holding right here is a tiny thumb drive. In this thumb drive, I built a Linux-based Batasera. Uh, emulation system, and this is okay. where I this is where I first played Breath of the Wild virtually, um, and where I played uh, Twilight Princess as well virtually, like the Wii U versions. So anyway, yeah, I just want to show you that. Yeah, this is this is it, man. This is actually I have hundreds of games on here on this little thumb drive. So that's incredible, and I've been, dude, I've been this close. They have these um. So I use TikTok a lot. You know, yeah. I'm one of them youngins. So I'm on TikTok all the <laughs> yes. time. Um, and they have one of these systems that they've been advertising. Can't remember the name. It's some long, complicated R six blah 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 blah. But it's a pre-built emulator. Yeah. That runs like thousands of games. I want one so bad. I'm holding one. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is one of those yeah. pre-built emulation systems. 
And I, I and, want one of and I was actually going to bring this up to you too. It came with like two P, uh, PS2 type controllers. However, I use this controller with my Batacera, and I I now use it with that. Really cool controller. Lots of buttons, and it's wireless. And uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's one of the systems, man. I should let you borrow it because I haven't been using it. That's I should let you borrow that. You want to borrow up it? That's up to you, buddy. Yeah, I borrow yeah. It. Because it sits here and I don't use it, by the way. I want to use it. I'd rather it be you in your hands for now. So, yeah. All right. When we see each other in the real world, IRL, okay? For a while now, there are there's a growing number of us, of people like us. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, well, it's not as niche as it used to be. Because I'm just, this is my point of view. I could be wrong. It's not necessarily a right or wrong. Yep. My outlook on it is... Things like D and D, or being nerdy, it was lame. You got bullied, okay? And that was that. At I mean, that time. was a part of it. I yeah. mean, I mean, even now it doesn't happen, but people have this mindset that like, it's because it's a very said thing. D and D, you're yeah. a nerd. You're lame. Oh yeah. I mean, like, and in no way, like, I guarantee, games like Baldur's Gate, okay. It's a D and D based game. It's yeah. it's completely revolved around D and D concepts. Yeah. But the amount of people who bought that game are incredible. So yeah. if you put something like D and D, but make it to where a wider audience can enjoy, those people saying D and D is lame, really think it's cool. They just have no idea. Well said. And there's proof. The massive success and lasting value and love for Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. Yeah. People globally love fantasy. And really, it's about stories. It is. It, it a good story. Good stories with heroes and characters and good versus evil. And you know what I mean? A proper good storytelling will always build in a massive audience. We crave, I mean, we crave that. The majority of people don't want to hear about a story where some guy goes to work every day and lives life because right. that's a regular old day. They want something interesting, something that they can't see when yeah. they go outside. And that's what a story, things like anime can bring you. Anime, D&D, &D, or Disney, or video games, whatever you can think of, that's the whole point. You get a story, and you get something to, to crave that creative mindset. Agreed. And um, what you're describing is what I, it's escapism. I think there's so much darkness and mundane things in the world, right? It's either scary or it indu induces fear or it's just boring as heck. Therefore, people want to escape. And that's sure. that's how I describe it. It's escaping. And when I watch stuff, that's why I love sci-fi and fantasy. I, I'm escaping I mean, into other worlds. I'm, or I'm watching The Expanse and I'm in space for five seasons, right? And, and, and I have to worry about having my grab boots on when the engine's on. You know what I mean? Like I'm in space with them. That's me escaping the real world. That's what that's what I want in entertainment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I agree. Like right now, I'm reading I'm reading a book right now. Um, it's called Night Ranger, and it's based off mm. of D and D. Yeah, it's based off of D and D, and it's a it's also kind of an anime concept. It's it's originally from China, and it's been translated into English. Hmm. Um, and it's basically this book. This guy. Um, have you ever heard of the term isekai? No, sorry. So it's a term where it's a regular old guy, but he gets transported into another fantasy world. Um, and so basically this guy, is, he was a regular old guy who just liked to play video games. And one yeah. of the video games he liked to play was a D&D &D MMO style game. Um, and one day he woke up and he was in this new world. And now everything that he was doing in the game, mm. he's doing in real life. Wow, and it, it's a really interesting book because yeah. it also still it still works off of stats. Like he he goes in and after he defeats enemies, he levels himself up. Got it. So it's it's a really cool concept. Yeah, oh, it is. And yeah. it's got like a thousand something chapters. It, it's an incredible book. Yeah, and and historically, movies in which the hero, I mean, like. Uh, the hero's journey. A lot of people know what that is. Um, I'm trying to remember the guy who created that. But um, anyway, the hero's journey. Or but when you take your main protagonist, you main your main guy, you drop him into another world. A that's a fish out of water story, which are great because with yeah, the Joseph Campbell, right? That's him. So Joseph Campbell came up with the hero's journey, 
But the fish out of water is the thing where, yes, you get to describe you, the storyteller, or in Night Ranger, you get to describe the world, how everything works, and what things are, and who people are, because you're new to it. You're with that person. They have to experience it for the first time, and so do we. Harry Potter. You know, the little kid who lived under the cabinet in, in a cupboard goes off to Hogwarts. Well, guess what? What's Hogwarts? She describes it to Harry. He learns about it, but so are we. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. And seeing, we're seeing it through his eyes and experiencing it, it for the first time exactly. with him. And because that, they could totally go off rails and be like, yeah, we're in Hogwarts now. Yeah. I mean, you don't you don't want to follow Draco, who knows all about it and stuff. No, we need a kid who knows nothing. We learn along with him. And the great stories come from that. Amazing stories. So I agree. I you agree. Know, I, you, you I, I use some concept. of that in my own book. Go ahead. Sorry. You see that concept. Yeah. Over, over, and over, yes. and over. And that's because you can't reinvent the wheel when it comes to No, like there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. No. That concept is going to live on for a long time. Uh, yes. Because... I mean, it's just the basic grounds of a good story. Amen. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. Yeah. So, and, 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 and I think our the world, people outside the niche of the things that we love, fantasy, sci-fi, gaming, and all this kind of stuff. But I think yeah. everybody craves that, though. The type of stories that we've been discussing. They crave yeah. the, the, that. And because I think it's innate within us, A, to want to enjoy stories, and B, to want to enjoy certain types of stories. I mean, again, where good triumphs over evil, right? You know, and, and, and that's where, like, Hollywood and games have gone so off the rails with all the gray. You know, there are no bad guys. There are no good guys. No. The well, best that's what I was just about. Go ahead. I'm trying to play rock, paper, scissors right now to see. <laughs> nah. Um, but... <laughs> No, yeah, this okay, is here, here we go. I'm doing scissors. What are you doing? Uh, oh, no, okay, I ready? Brought... All right, ready? One, two, three, go. Uh, oh. I got you. Oh. All right. No, I'll let you All go right. anyway. I, 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 I really, my time to you. So, as far as the whole Hollywood and mm. major studios, I was talking to you earlier about yeah. how everything's going to crap. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was just about to bring up the whole thing. So, AAA Studios, which I explained to you earlier, that kind of concept, they're promising games that aren't as ca and captivating anymore. Like, if you go... I'm talking about light years behind our time. Yeah. Um, games used to be way better. Yes. I mean, like, the story would... Now, granted, we didn't have the technology for graphics or the newer mechanics that are involved. But if you go back and look, games were more about story back then. Because yes. they didn't have the means to make the mechanics or graphics. So they had to make it entertaining by story. Now, well said. They, try, they try to promise this huge story and overdo something else or th th it's a yeah. money grab they throw in these microtransactions make their game 70 dollars whenever the indie game industry is booming you can go on the steam marketplace right now go under the indie tab and you'll find games like hades you know that was an incredible game about greek mythology i don't I, know if you've heard of it i have heard um, of it, yeah. it's where i'm getting inspiration for the game that i'm creating right now and the story on it there's so much like lore embedded into things that you actually have to search to find like there's mm. a surface level lore that you get nice. just by playing the game but there's a embedded lore deeper inside of like the weapons the map the arenas and even the hub have its own embedded lore. It's got its own building. Like, it's it's incredible the difference between now AAA and games when it wanted to be fun and not so much to make the money. Agreed. And uh, to dovetail to go along with that is look at the popularity of vintage games. Okay, Pe people, I mean, th there's channels which get millions of, of views that are just playing these older games, right? The ones that you actually described, where there's so much care and, and creation and storytelling built into it. And again, yeah, Hollywood and, and gaming, graphics, visual effects, better than ever, arguably, right? 
We can do anything. We can make anything. We can show you anything. If you have a thought, I can make it visually. However, it seems like that has replaced the care and attention that goes into the story. The stories have suffered. And there's more that goes along with that conversation. We can tab it another time. But but yeah, it's where story suffers in the name of having really cool explosions. Or, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I think that's I think they may be good together in that, that realm. So I, I agree. I mean, like you you can think way back when, like if you go and ask somebody random, have you ever played Majora's Mask? The majority yeah. of people probably have played Majora's Mask. It's an incredible game, full of story, full of care, and people yeah. like it. But then you can come up to somebody. Let me. I can ask you. Have you played a? Have you played a? Starfield. No, I've heard a lot about it, but I have not. Super hyped up game. Yes. Everybody was talking about it. Yes. Terrible game. Terrible game. Full of bugs. Not fun. Wow. Hot take. Not even a hot take. Most people agree. Wow. It's not trending. Nobody plays it. And it was hyped up, made to be this gigantic, cool yes. game. Yes. Set in space, but the mechanics of the game are not fun. The wow. story is lackluster. And it's just, it's it, completely different whenever I'd much rather just go play something like Majora's Mask or it, play, like I was saying, an indie game. Yes. And, you know, and that's what's so sad. The concept is pretty cool. The concept is great. And there's another game I've been seeing commercials for that's like Starfield. And I wish I shouldn't have brought it up because I can't think of the name. But another open worlds, ships, and worlds in a galaxy to explore. I can't remember the name. I shouldn't have brought it up. But the point is, yes, again, story suffers. And such a cool concept, right? Imagine an open world where I can go to any planet and do what I want. I mean... I, my goodness, if it's done well, I would play that for days. And it's sad that you just gave me this report on, wow, that's really sad about Starfield. Um, but it, it's similar in Hollywood. Like, if you if you think yeah, about it, like... completely. I think it was 2022, Jura the Jurassic World 3 came out, if you remember. Yes. And it wasn't very good. No. Um, but then you go way back to the first Jurassic World. Do you remember how, or not even Jurassic World, Jurassic Park? Park. Guess what? Do you what? remember how incredible those movies were? Of course I do. I was working at the movie theater when it came out, by the way. Line oh, Jurassic Park? Yes. I know. I'm wow. that old. You're welcome, everybody. Um, oh, what are you, like 80? Yeah, uh, yeah, 82. Uh, it's you were so in the movie, right? With the dinosaurs <laughs> and stuff? <laughs> Thank you were you. one of the dinosaurs. Thank you. Right? Thank you. Um, back in it. <laughs> so Jurassic Park, 1993. Uh, I, I just graduated high school. I know we can make more old, old jokes later, but the point is lines wrapped around the buildings. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the closing credit music uh, for Jurassic World because I'm in there sweeping up popcorn and stuff. I worked at the theater. It was crazy that summer. Insane. Insane. And it's just it's not going to compare to like Jurassic World's just not no. as good. No, it's not. None of them. Yeah, Jurassic Park uh, Two wasn't that great, right? It was just more of a like a monster fest. Um, it didn't have the awe, right? Spielberg did a good job. Again, it was a combination of visual effects, a cool story, which of course came from Michael Crichton. The source material yeah. was great. Okay, his book and his warnings about genetic manipulation and what can happen. Yeah, I mean, brilliant book. It did translate well to the screen. But the second you want to grab more money and squeeze more money from that Jurassic Park, guess what? You're going to run out of juice real quick. Unless you... So, anyway. The original's great. Agreed. Yeah, so. but it's so hard to... It, you can't even, like, categorize it as much anymore because you have failures like that. Yeah. But then you also have, like I was telling you, the new Dune that came out. Right. Incre incredible movie. I haven't seen it yet. I want to. I won't spoil it. But the first one and the second one, yeah. incredible. Yes. So you can't categorize as all new movies as bad. No, but no, like, no. But it's, it's such a shame that like... Yes. So the, the companies that want to cash grab the most, you can tell. Yeah. It's either, it's either rushed or it's just not as good as it could be. I mean, look, look at the Marvels. 
the Marvels, the latest MCU movie, um, yeah. is the biggest flop in their entire history. Yeah. Both yeah. ticket sales, sales of, of actual media, and streaming. Uh, all completely mm-hmm. flop. And guess what? The movie basically sucked. So, yes. Uh, yeah, people are sick and tired of being shoveled this crap. Literally. Yeah. Um, and then I can't explain. There's outliers out there. Like Barbie making a billion dollars. I can't comment on it. I haven't seen it. I it, can't tell you yeah, that one. <laughs> it, obvi- it found an audience. Great for them. Happy for them. I've heard about some of the storied lines in it. Don't care for them. But that's that's another... I, so, so. I've heard that Barbie has a deeper meaning. I haven't looked much into it. But apparently there is a good... like. It premise does. behind it. No, I mean, it, but it's not. It's not for me, and oh, I no, don't think it would no. be for the majority. Yeah, no, definitely not for me. And guess what? It's, it wasn't for little girls either. That movie was not made for the you know eight to ten year old who's playing with Barbies no. and have for the last fifty years. This was made for a much older audience, a very skeptical audience, a, a modern audience. Yeah, and uh, it, but and it made some money. Well, good for them. I'm glad they made some money. Um, you know, I'm not going to disparage anyone from making money, but anyway. But to go back on what you were saying about Marvel, yes, Marvels was terrible, but you you can't. Now I will absolutely say right now, Marvel as like, um, like their movies, not the movie Marvels, but got it. Yep, Marvel. the, the MCU. You, yep. Yes. I'm talking the new season of Loki, incredible. I did, um, I did enjoy parts of that. Some of it was kind of a snore fest. I loved the ending. Okay, the ending was so cool. That was epic. Ooh. That was that felt justified, and that was very cool. Yeah, it was, and it, and it took a complete spin. It even if you go into the lore like deep, because I watched some videos after because I was really yeah. interested on in, like what else. It took things way back from when the first Thor came out. Wow. It w- it went back that far. That's cool. Yes. And I thought that was really cool, and I'm, I'm hoping to see that they expand on that pretty well. Well said, and I'm glad you brought this up, because it is about respecting, honoring, and, and doing justice to the original source material. And that's where so many of these movies and series, from Marvel specifically, have gone completely off the rails. You get these young writers in a room... Half of them have never even seen a comic book. They have their own set of ideas. And really, these ideas have nothing to do with the original storylines of Loki or Thor or, or Daredevil. Okay? And I, and I bring up Daredevil because I really, really hope they do justice to this. Right? The new series is coming. I heard that they scrapped a bunch of it, but I love Daredevil. I mean, to me, it's the very best out of all of them. Um... So anyway, yeah, but it's about respecting that and respecting the original source material. And when they don't do that, yeah, it's going to be complete garbage. And it has been. So. Which I agree. Because, because, yeah, you can respect the original source material, but right. at the end of the day, it's got to expand, right? No, and you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. Agreed. What's already done has been done, and you need to go further. Yes. But there's no, also that, that line... There is that line where it's like you shouldn't change it from what change is good, but not the wrong change. Well, if you take a, a character like Thor and uh, and man, or let me switch, switch subjects here. But basically, yes, when you make characters go outside of what that character and who they are, you like we know who Captain America is. All right, he was a brave soldier who believed in America and all, all this good stuff, right? He's a, he was a good person. Therefore, when you gave him superpowers, it only amplified. I mean, and that's what the movie was about, right? However, if we now change him into a completely different guy, you know, who, who signs up with the bad guys and, and, and betrays everything he believes, that's where I have a big issue, right? Don't change the characters and their motivations and who they are and what they believe in. you got to stick to that. But you can... Ex- one- Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, you just gotta, and you can, exp- like you said, expansion is cool, but don't destroy the original while you're expanding. So, yeah, if that makes sense. But I think that was one thing that they actually did 
well. Because with you saying Captain America, good mm. guy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In in game or I'm getting the two mixed up. It one of the Infinity War? Latest, one one of those two. Yep. If you remember, have you've seen both, right? Yeah, of course. Sorry, spoiler alert, but this is. No, no, I mean, old. come on. It came out years ago. We're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that you, um, Thor, like, uh, not Thor, Captain America was able to pick up the hammer. Right. And that goes back to him being a good guy. He's being worthy to pick up the hammer, which nobody can do but Thor currently. Yes, because o- o- Odin blessed it that way, he who is worthy. And that was that was yes. such a great scene in, in Ultron, by the way, where they're all trying to pick it yes. up. But he did yes. he did actually move it a little bit. He moved it and Thor noticed. Yes. Oh, Thor he noticed. noticed big time. He was he was worried. <laughs> great, great scene. I've yeah, heard it was I, an incredible scene. I've heard behind the scenes speculation that perhaps and this could be just hearsay and people making stuff up. Captain America could have picked it up that very moment in Ultron. I've heard the same thing. But to not, you know, he, he's a good guy, right? He didn't want to discredit Thor. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that same theory that yeah. he could have picked it up, but he oh, didn't. Yeah. But man, you, you can't, the feeling of emotion and swell in my heart and my being when he grabbed that hammer, right? And he just started letting loose with the hammer. That was- so cool. So cool. I mean, like, that was one of the best parts of Endgame. It's just, oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was good. Man. So good. And uh, Endgame is, like, really the perfect title for that movie. Because it really was the end of the, of the good Marvel movies. That was the Endgame. It'd be nice to have, yeah. the, have the start game happen, right? Where a good Marvel <laughs> movie comes out. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, honestly, that was the last good Marvel movie. Um, <laughs> so, to talk about MCU some more, because why not? Yeah, yeah. One thing I've hated, and I understand, it's, it's a cool idea, but right. I feel this might be a personal idea. Or a personal dislike. In the most recent Spider-Man, have you seen it? Of course. Love it. Yeah. I liked all of it. Okay. Until they just, the ending. Okay, which Nobody one? knows who he is anymore. I know. My daughter loves Tom Holland. She loves the new Spider-Man. I love the new Spider-Man movie. I mean, having Tobey Maguire, and by the way, Andrew Garfield. So underrated. I think he's amazing. Well, I yeah, wish he would have He is the amazing Spider-Man, Spider-Man isn't he? Um, you yeah. are amazing. You are amazing. But those I mo- wish he would have got his third movie. Oh, and I think they, they should, and they, they should. And if it's done well, I, I because I just I liked him as Spider Man, you know, yeah, especially the first one. He had this kind of this angsty moodiness to him. It was a slightly different take on Peter Parker, and I dug it, um, big time. Anyway, I really I'm a big Andrew Garfield fan that way. But as we've said, let's see. To- people have said Tobey Maguire is the best Spider Man. Andrew's the best, whatever you know, the best uh, 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 Peter Parker, but. But Tom Holland is like the perfect package, right? I think Tom Holland is an incredible Spider-Man. Thank you. That's what I'm saying, right? From the first time we see him in Civil War, so great. His childlike uh, enthusiasm for everything uh, just yeah. ca- this blasts through the screen naturally, and and you just want to like go, oh, dude, you're you're so you know like you just want to hang out with him. I just he's Tom Holland's f- freaking awesome. So. And it's kind of cool. I think they even notice his childlike enthusiasm because Tony Stark takes on that kind of fatherish role Completely. where he like cares for Spider Man. Like yes. that scene where he gets mad at him and he's like, "Give me the suit." Yes, he takes the suit away. Yes, and it's like because he doesn't think he should be doing it, and it's really cool that like that's why I'm saying I feel like they understand that he kind of gives off a child, not child, but like a younger vibe, yeah. and they work yes. with that and make. Yeah. Which was a fantastic part of the movie when he does do that without the suit. I mean, the whole building falls on the kid, right? And in yeah. that in that moment, he has to make that decision. But what's really wonderful is we see that in Iron Man 3. We see Tony Stark with minimal tech, makes his own stuff. 
you know, his own yeah. stun gun stuff. Like he doesn't need the suit to go and do something amazing. And and I love that that we get to see that after the events of the of the Spider Man movie, right? Tony actually proving that hey, I, I I am Iron Man, and guess what? You know, I don't need the suit all the time. And you know what I mean? So I, I love tying those two things together. Yeah, so treating good. Iron Man as more of a persona rather than oh rather yeah. Than I mean, Tony's bigger than life, and um, perfect and miraculous casting. At Robert Downey Jr. as him. Robert Downey Jr. Plop has played an amazing Iron Man ever since oh. he started. Oh, I, I mean, j I just watched the original Iron Man not too long ago. Actually, the first two. Um, but yeah, the the original. Um, because in in real life, Robert Downey Jr. had some major issues. He overcame them, married with kids, and got the huge career. Right? He he is Tony Stark, hundred percent. Tony Stark yeah. becomes a better man as the series progresses. You know, he settles yeah. down with one woman and then eventually marries her. Like, you know, he becomes a better man over time. And just like Robert Downey Jr. Did, I mean, it's just perfect. Even he even took the glove and he was ready to die for the whole world. 100%. Um, and and that's just... Yeah, which really ties... all character development. It ties all the way back to the original Avengers... When Captain America and, and they're in the lab on the uh, big airship and he's like, you know, you're not the guy to lay down on the grenade or lay down on the wire. And Tony's like, yeah. I'll, I'll just cut the wire. But in that perfect tie back of storytelling and, and the arc of a character, he grabs the nuke. At, well, it's that same movie. He grabs that nuke and goes through the wormhole, not knowing I mean, he, he laid down his life. So freaking great. So good. And and again, spoiler alert, this is newer for the Loki series. You've seen it all, right? I have. So, like I was telling you, at the end, you know, when he's walking down the uh, the catwalk kind of thing, yep. and he said, I have to do this yes. um, for, uh, for us. Mm. He said that also in the first store, is what Did I was he? getting at earlier. He said that the same sentence. Did he? Um, yes, yes, yes. Um, Re okay, wow, I need to revisit that. So, if, if they did a tie back to the first Thor movie, it's the movie you're talking about, not, not comic. Yes, back in the first Thor movie. That's fantastic, right? I mean, I, I love that. Um, that's that's great. Yeah, yeah, and it um, it ties all back because. This, he had an incredible great character development, probably one of the best ones, in my opinion, in the MCU, only trumped by a couple. He starts off as this dude. He wants to be king. He's doing everything he can to be king, being yeah. a bad guy. Yeah. He goes through. He gets his hands on the uh, the thing. The, the, one, the thing. One, one of the Infinity Stones, yeah. And boom. You know, he tried... Go ahead. And he he finds out that he's actually dead. And now he's all about the um, TCA. And I know. He's all about it. He wants to help because he has nowhere in time. He's dead. He's not supposed to exist. And then at the end, you know, he decides he's going to do something for the world. He doesn't have his place in time. Yeah. But he's going to keep the time yeah. in place. It, I, I like agreed. I liked th I like that ending because he in that moment f became fully realized. If we're gonna call him and Thor little G gods, right? Um, although I, I felt in the first couple seasons they really overhumanized him, right? Kind of diminished him of the yeah. Loki who was trying to take over New York. They turned him into a little wussy for a while. So, him, however, laying down his life at the end in giving it all was at, l at least, you know, it, it was great, you know, and, and was uh, a nice uh, a moment to get away from all that, that overhumanization, if you will. So, yes. Yeah. And, and this even ties back to the first Thor, too. Odin told Loki mm -hmm. and Thor, you're both going to be kings. Hmm. Thor was king. And um, Loki's kind of the king, 
too. He's sitting on a throne. Yeah. Controlling time. I need to um, uh, I need to rewatch the original Thor. And I, I wonder if that was you know, a foreshadow if they had that idea planned when he when Odin said you're both gonna be king, I wonder if they had that idea kind of planned out, like, yeah, we're gonna make Loki a king, but not of Asgard. Yeah, I mean, and even if it didn't happen that way, even if they decided to do this in a story at the end of the Loki season two, knowing that that, that was said is honoring that line. You know, is honoring it, 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 yeah, so it, and that's good enough, right? Again, Genius. that's respecting the lore and respecting what came before, and then building upon it. And, and what do they do? They expanded upon it. Yeah, I think Loki was an amazing series. That um... I love Tom Hiddleston, right? I mean, just as an actor. Oh, and, he's and amazing. He, he's amazing, and and he especially he, as Loki. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. I, I love watching him. He fits the persona so well, and I'm hoping he does more. That would um, be nice, you know. And uh, my goodness, we could talk for three more hours with the thing, the word that I want to say right now. So I'm really, so I want to keep this brief. But I don't care for the whole multiverse thing. I find it to be sort of a storytelling crutch. I love the possibilities it gives, though. All right, endless possibilities. But when things become endless, then they're almost become meaningless, right? You know, and therefore it's a bit much. And uh, so anyway, that's my quick aside on that. But I'm sure that, that we can cover that some other time. The, well, mul we'll the, mul the multiverse. I, uh, that so, uh, very expansive topic. We can definitely yeah, get into that. Okay. Yeah. So um, this has been a test. This is an upload. Thanks for watching.